Next, we'll talk about applying for a graduate research fellowship and how to prepare a competitive application. A complete application package consists of the following parts. The first part is the personal information that you list in your application, which includes your work and educational experiences, your proposed field of study, and ac any academic honors or scholarships that you may have received. Don't just list the name of the scholarship, say something about what it's for or why you were selected or how important it may be. Put things in context for the reviewers. Very important, you should list information about your research experiences so far, any presentations, talks, or posters, whether presented at your college or university or at an outside conference. If you've been productive enough to have publications already, do list those. Many applicants, especially early on, don't have publications yet, but if you have a paper in press or submitted or an honors thesis or even results from data that you're writing up now, some of the reviewers will want to know about those also. The reviewers vary in how they judge and weigh your achievements, so it's important to be as clear and accurate about this information as possible. Say what state all of your um, experiences are in. The second part is your three-page personal statement, otherwise known as your personal relevant background and future goals statement. Now here's where you can tell your story, including explaining the details about the research experiences that you listed in the previous item. Now we'll talk more about preparing a personal statement in just a moment. And the third part is your graduate research statement, which is only two pages. Probably you'll spend the most time preparing these two statements. The fourth part consists of all of your transcripts, which you'll upload electronically. And then the last part, the fifth part, consists of your three letters of reference. These are due the first Thursday of November, the week after the deadline for your application. Your letter writers must get them in by the deadline, which is 5 p.m. Eastern time. Keep in mind this is Eastern time and not the local time of where the letter writers are located. Make sure your letter writers understand when the deadline is, especially because it was different in previous competitions. All of these details are contained in the solicitation. So let's go into detail about preparing a graduate research fellowship application. First, let's talk about your personal statement, the three-page statement. This is where you explain your life, how your life and academic experiences demonstrate your potential for achievement in science, technology, engineering, or math, STEM research. So tell your story. Who are you and where are you going? Help the reviewers get to know you a bit. Tell them about your motivation for the field that you anticipate entering, your experiences, whether personal or professional, that contributed to your motivation for your decision to pursue STEM education in graduate school and a career in STEM. Explain how you prepared yourself for this. Also, how have your experiences shaped your goals? How have any successes or especially any failures motivated you? What inspires you? Have you had to overcome any obstacles? What use have you made of the resources that were available to you in your life and schooling so far? In your personal statement, be sure to provide details and examples rather than vague claims. Do talk about individual research experiences. What was the project that you worked on? What was your part in it? Where was it done? Why was it worth doing? How did your part fit in with the whole? What did you learn? Did you have to do any advanced coursework or preparation in order to do this? Try to present a coherent picture rather than just a list of seemingly unrelated experiences. In the personal statement, you should also discuss your career aspirations and goals. It's very important, as I'll discuss in detail, um, to address NSF's merit review criteria. As part of this three-page statement, make sure you include separate statements that the reviewers can use to identify your intellectual merit and your broader impacts. More on that in just a moment. The second statement that's part of your graduate research fellowship application is the two-page research statement. Here's where you describe the research that you plan to conduct in graduate school. This will help the reviewers judge your ability to plan, motivate, and conduct research, as well as your ability to think like a scientist. You'll need to be very concise in this, in this section, just giving enough background to motivate the reasons or hypotheses behind your investigation. Do connect the dots for the reviewers who are not all experts in your topic. Make it clear to them what's innovative, original, or potentially important about your study. You'll want to display your depth of understanding of both the questions and your approach, and how to know if you've succeeded. You might also sketch out the future steps after your first project or projects, or what you might do if the data don't come out as you expect. 
Just as in the personal statement, you'll want to include separate statements that highlight both the intellectual merit and the broader impacts of the research that you're planning to conduct. Which brings us to NSF's merit review criteria. These review criteria are used foundation-wide. They include two things, intellectual merit and broader impacts. NSF evaluates all graduate research fellowship program applications as well as all research proposals on how important the, import the proposed activity is to advancing knowledge within its own field or across different fields, intellectual merit, as well as how well does the proposed activity benefit society or advance desired societal outcomes, broader impact. Again, that's what the reviewers will be looking for, so do include both of those in both statements. Your merit and impact as an individual, as a young scientist, can be differentiated from the merit and impact of your research topic. First, here are some examples of intellectual merit that you can consider for your personal statement. How well do you plan and conduct research? How well do you work as a member of a team, as well as independently? And how well do you communicate the research and interpret it? Now let's talk about your broader impacts. Notice that these are only examples here. This is not a checklist. Coherent applications do not have all of these things, and you may well have others. Societal benefits can come from many kinds of activities. It can include the impact of you as an individual on society. Now, NSF is interested in increasing the participation of underrepresented groups, including women in some fields or underrepresented students, students with disabilities or veterans. Again, you don't have to be underrepresented in your field, but if you've done something to broaden participation of others, you may want to talk about that. You can also have broader impacts by improving STEM education generally, or you can have impact on society by increasing scientific literacy. This can come from writing about science for the public, blogging, radio or television broadcasting about science, or you may be an active person in a science club or in a professional organization for other students. You might have brought along younger students in your field through tutoring them or other kinds of outreach. So definitely include what you may have done that could address NSF's goal to improve the competitive STEM workforce through your activities or through helping others. And of course, both the intellectual merit of your research and the broader impacts of your research on society are things you'll need to cover in the two-page research statement. You can highlight these with headers or in other means if you wish so that the reviewers can find them easily.